I often think how lucky people are in Aurora. We're, qu we're quite well re removed from the kind of university or college I would like to be able to yeah. go back to a play, a lecture, or whatever. Yeah. And here, they can, you know, 10 minutes from your house, you have the ability to go to a play, go to a musical, a chorus, or whatever. And, and Aurora needs to keep that, that little bit to help the people. That, to, they're very, very fortunate. And, uh, when we went to Aurora, you can imagine what sports were like. But we would go and enjoy them. And and uh, Mr. Gilkey, I don't think you've ever heard about him, but he'd sit there and coach. You know, he never got excited. He never did anything. He just sat there. And then you'd have, you know, the people running up and down the, the field and the, uh, the court or whatever they were doing. I remember sitting out in snow to watch a football game. If you can imagine what a football game would be like back then. Not that as exciting as today, but we thought it was. One of the few trips I remember was my first time going into Chicago from the dirt road out here. And we went to the University of Chicago, and we went to the museum there. And I always felt that that started me and going and enjoying museums and whatever. Now, I don't endorse the University of Chicago's neoconservative political thought. <laughs> But I do endorse their museums, and that and Aurora introduced me to those. I'm just going back to the friendship thing. Uh, uh, I haven't kept contact with an awful lot of people, but I have kept contact with some people. And I had uh, one of my roommates out in Oregon. We went up there to see them uh, a couple of one, times. Then one of the parts of my job I had at the end was interview student or uh, substitute teachers, and they sent me a couple of young ladies to interview. And I can remember this young lady with a pigtail, she wanted to teach very much, and she had a college degree, and I have a form I used to fill out. And I said, well, where did you graduate? What's your vitae? And she said, Aurora College. And we talked for quite a while. I don't remember, remember her name, but we talked for a long time. And Aurora had not changed much. Her view of what Aurora was when she was there, she met her husband there. Well, she taught one day for us, and then he got the word that Union a carbide was going to move him, and so mm. off he went, and then mm. she disappeared. Oh, she but that, just that contact with a, somebody from Aurora what, mm. living out here yeah. and wanting to teach in my school, that's oh, amazing. Yeah. You know, if she was teaching and I was going to college here, I'd have to sometimes spend the time in the car when they were having their meetings because I had my own test oh, and whatever right. to do. But listening to Mr. Stone and so many others Disney. of that era when they... Why did they go there? The Depression, lack of money, Aurora, their religion was there. And in talking to these fantastic people, uh, their experiences were the same we were having. Mm -hmm. So you had a place there for people, and so you hope you opened up your heart to probably people today. Roger Perolini, in my estimation, I call him Mr. Aurora College. Amen. Mr. No, I never sang for him. In my own church here in town, they pay me a stipend every month not to sing. Be, be careful, Richard. Don't talk. Don't speak. My wife will kid it. She tried to get me to read a few things they had before services whenever. Because I had drifted away and I we came back to the church that I was baptized in and whatever. As a fire marshal with a college education, I used to give classes. And you have to kind of exert yourself if you're going to do that with this breed of people. And so I would make sure I could be heard. I would make sure that I could be understood. And I wanted to be sure I kept their attention. And so when I read the poem for that day, I was, this is, I'd leave the church. Well, there was a little bit of a problem. I was finished, close to Bible, and was walking there, and they were still reading because I was went so fast. So my wife and the minister don't get me to do that anymore. Oh. <laughs> but Mr. Am Mr. Perolini is Mr. Aurora, and T. P. Stevens was too. To us, he I listened to him speak at the he's, reunions. He's, he used to come back to Connecticut every year, so that we we knew him that way too.